Don't mind if I do. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Last Epoch once again. And what do I have for you today? Mike, one of the senior developers at 11th Hour Games held his normal Friday Q&A live stream on Twitch, which means I get to bring you Dev Chat 126. And I'm happy to say that we are now getting cycle two teasers again on the Friday dev stream. So I've got something to show you today. And we're going to start off dev chat 126 with Mike talking about bizarre and search features. Any plans to improve the search capability in the Merchants Guild? Oh yeah, definitely. There's there's several, um, I know there's one major thing that we had to do with the um, UI with Merchants Guild that I know everyone hates and I'm sorry. Um, but when we started making the system, we thought we had some technical limitations, we did at the time, that were causing it to be mandatory. And um, uh, like, I don't know, a week before launch, someone figured out how to fix it. So we didn't need them. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're making some changes. And there, there was a, a couple other things that were just straight oversights by us, things that we should have done and we just didn't because we made mistakes um, that, are, that are getting looked at as well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's definite, um, and I know, I know I get like, not upset, but I, 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 I take digs at the term quality of life, but I, in this situation it actually is because all it's doing is reducing the number of clicks to do the exact same thing. Um, so quality of life, uh, improvements coming to the, to the merchant skills UI. Coming cycle two. Mike makes the decision to address the elephant in the room. That was probably a good good time to address the elephant in the room. Um, uh, with regard, there were two recent changes that happened um, between or to, to to Circle of Fortune that are, I would say, very commonly being attributed to um, Merchant's Guild as the the cause, um, being the price change for. Um, Price change for the, the the sorry the gold sell price for keys and the favor purchase cost for um, the glyphs prophecy and um, I, I fully understand why it seems like they were uh, merchant skilled driven decisions um, and believe it or not they were not. Um, the, both of those things would have happened regardless if the Merchant's Guild didn't exist. Um, the the big problem, I guess I can say, the big reason and the big problem, I guess I'll tell you why both decisions were made. Um, the the reason why the the key gold selling cost was dropped was one of the big things we want to avoid in the game is having a primary means of gold acquisition being through selling items to to the, to to, uh, to a merchant, um, to like a shop in, in the game. Um, so it doesn't really matter who's getting that gold or what they're using that gold for. The fact that that's a um, really um, useful, powerful, positive, like uh, driving purpose behind getting these items is specifically to sell them is not something we're interested in having in the game. Um, so the things you're getting from those purchases might need to be compensated or... or uh, brought back in a different way that's possible at what point is a build successful and uh so i think i think generally we consider most builds being successful if they can uh if they can handle in the like the 300 corruption range is generally a hey that build is successful and we, we also don't have a um like a, a nerf line like a hey this build this corruption's too high we're gonna nerf it now there's, there's not a line for that, really. Um, I think if you start seeing four-digit corruption numbers, um, there's probably something we've made a mistake on. Um, 300 corruption. The previous week it was 200, but it looks like two to 300, you've done really good. And I like what he said, there isn't a nerf line. I've read a lot, and sometimes I even say it like, that EHG will use the arena and be like, this person's at 800 corruption, something needs to get nerfed or something is wrong. No, maybe they have perfect synergies. Maybe they're playing an S tier build. Maybe they have perfect gear 
And who knows, maybe they're a good player. You don't know. But I do think Mike has a good point. If a build is capable of getting into four digits, that is not what they want. Maybe if you have a perfectly synergized party. Cycle 2 1.1 teaser. Check this out. So you may be familiar with this guy. This is already in the game. He it's, looks it's scary. Pretty, it's, it's fine. It's, it's cool. Um, but we've got a, a, an improvement or a, a refresh, a remodeling, a reskin, a roundup rework. Let's see if you can tell uh, the difference. Forth, that I think is pretty sweet looking. So uh, here is the concept art for the uh, Void Thrall rework. <laughs> it looks the same. It practically yeah. looks... <laughs> The same. Let me get rid of my camera. But bit of a bit of a uh, grime up instead of a glow up. A grime up. It's a thing, isn't it? <laughs> now let's talk dungeons. Uh, are there any plans to rework current dungeons, especially like this Arbor Dungeon boss? Um, so the 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 we we do have plans for improving dungeon experiences. Uh, the key part there is actually this boss space getting up to the boss. Um, the Lightless Arbor Dungeon boss is, I think, it, it's a tricky one because um, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's one of my favorite boss fights we have in the game. Um, but I think it is it's it's different. I think dungeon bosses in general are different enough that they need better tutorialization. Um, and I think that there's an issue right now where people often come to a dungeon boss, a, a low tier dungeon boss, for the, or any, you get to light the server for the first time as like a level 95, and you're going through the dungeon at, at tier one, and you just cruise through the whole thing. You don't actually have to learn the mechanics that well. There's a couple things you have to learn just because it doesn't work otherwise, but like for the most part, you just kind of cruise on through, and it's it's all gravy. Um, and you come back at rank two, and it's maybe you get tested, that big slam almost kills you, but it doesn't quite finish you off, and you're like, oh, that was a big hit, you move on. Um, and so you've gone through two tiers of it, and you're, you've got a really strong character, um, and and you get to tier three, and the big slam, if anyone knows the boss fights, knows what I'm talking about, the big slam kills you, and you're like, well, that was bullshit. I, I, I didn't, I, well, how was I supposed to know that was going to happen? And you've gone through the tutorialization process, but because your character was strong enough when it did, it didn't have Mike that relative difficulty, uh, you didn't learn. Um, and it seems impossible it seems like how can i have my defense I, there, was, there was a post that i was reading uh recently about this and, and um the it, it, they, were, they were trying to build their defenses up to withstand the hit instead of figuring out the timing to dodge the hit and um they're both viable approaches I, uh, that hit in particular is uh, not really meant to be uh, tanked in in most situations <laughs> like Lagan's um, laser, and maybe maybe it's happening too fast. Maybe it's I don't know. There's, there's there's enough people having a negative experience with it. There's probably something that could be improved with it um, for most people. But I think that there's um, I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with it. If that makes any sense. But yes, there are. Getting back to dungeons in general, there are other things that are fundamentally not awesome about dungeons, specifically the. Uh, lead up to the boss, I think, is uh, it's uncontroversial to say that it could use some love, and um, that is something we are working on. We were talking about this on stream yesterday. How do you make the lead up to the boss fun? Because obviously, the we want the boss drops, and you want the reward for the dungeon, so you literally just try to get to the boss as fast as possible. And the only way you could make it fun or worthwhile is having rewards leading up to the boss or checkpoints that can further your drops. For example, if you kill this many enemies leading up to the boss, you have a better chance for a drop, or there's hidden caches in the dungeon that you could run into, or different things. Like, they would really have to do a lot of work to make that more fun. And later on the stream, Mike talks about how Judd, I don't know if it was in a forum post or something, mentioned about removing walls in the Temporal Sanctum, and that has now been reeled back. So right now they do not plan on removing walls in that dungeon. 1.1 going to be bonkers. Be play any pinnacle boss near future. 1.1, it's coming. 1.1 will have our first proper pinnacle boss in it um, and assistance to go with it. Uh, 
and some some bonkers stuff that's gonna be super cool i just i've been making um just made some new tech for uh more dynamic environmental hazards in boss arenas yesterday i've never ever heard mike use the word bonkers on a hundred and hundred and twenty six of these streams also just so you're aware later on in the stream Mike talks about how there are multiple bosses that are new coming, but only one pinnacle. When I think about that, you, you think about um, maybe there's a couple like guards or smaller bosses you got to beat to get the things to actually unlock the pinnacle boss. Kind of think of um, Emperor of Corpses, right? You got to kill the three lightning dragons to get to the next one. I'm guessing it'll be something like that. Now for some bad news. Uh, is entirely new skills planned to be added for upcoming 1.1 patch cycle one um cycle two uh I, I i don't think that there's much in the way of the skills pipeline happening this patch um i think most of that time is being put into the bosses themselves um so not much if anything in the way of new skills Usually, I, I, usually I'm heavily involved in that, and I haven't done anything on them at all. I haven't even conceptualized one yet, so. Um. Next cycle, no new skills. I get asked this question a lot, and I want you to hear it from EHG Mike. All right, any plans for a crafting system based around idols? Yes. Can you tell me more about that? No. Um. They do have a plan to allow us to craft idols. They have not said anything other than there's a plan for it. My guess, dungeon reward. It appears cycle two is also going to legacy. All right. Will certain cycle features be added to the base game after a cycle is over um, if it were well received? Well, initially, um, 1.1 will come immediately to the base game. So it'll happen uh, before the cycle is over. Um... But yeah, that's the plan. We do design any cycle content to uh, to, to, to be included in uh, the base game as well. We, we we're, 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 the game's not big enough yet uh, where we can afford to. Um, I mean, the game both in the sense of like the company and in the sense of the the game content itself. We don't have room to uh, create content that will only be in the game for a few months. I feel like we'll have that as an option down the road, but right now it's got to go in the game and stay in the game. There you have it. All right, everyone, we have come to the final question for Dev Chat 126, and I'm allowing Mike to take out the stream drawing pictures. Mike, as always, thank you for continuing these Friday live streams. The community truly appreciates it. Always so informative. You're a great guy. Two ass at the end of the video. Ask number one. I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. I'm hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it, but of course, only if you think I've earned it. And if I haven't earned it, I'm going to work harder for you. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 131 members that have signed up. It is the best way to support the channel into the future. You get access to movie night and game night and the VIP lounge and access to stream audio and video. Best place to support. First link in the description. I'm out of here. Mike, show off those drawing skills. We have plans to, uh, what I said, the big issue with corruption scaling and stability farming on alts is that you can end up in a situation, it's really hard to predict what difficulty you're going to need. So like, if, if you're like... <laughs> I don't know if this is a good thing to grab, but like let's let's say let's say you've got your um, your, your your difficulty, this is difficulty as you go up, and this is time as we go this way, and and you've got this like um, your character your character's power. This is like the difficulty their character can handle, right, as you're going. And um, I think a lot of people get right now uh, get stuck sort of uh, going going along this line here. Um, where you are, where it's the game is always a little bit easier. You're, you're like your character's here and your alts, and and the difficulty of the game you're playing is actually here. 
and you're like, I, I, but I want, I want this difficulty now, but I can't, I'm the only stuff I have access to is too low. Like I can't do stuff that's hard enough. Right. Um, and that's frustrating. And then, um, you can also have, I kind of did this graph bad. It should, it should look more like that. Um, and then you have the, like the other issue of we want, we, we, if you ask, if we just give people full access to all of the stuff, actually, it's <laughs> oh no, can I undo? Nope, can't undo. We're ruining everything. I, I got a better way to draw this though. Here we go. Um, if we just gave you full access to everything that your main has, this is the line of difficulty that your main has access to, right? And so if you're on your if you're on your alt and you go try and do stuff that your main's doing, there's this huge gap here where it's a it's a problem where you're like you can't you're you're doing you're way under leveled for things. And so having um this line having this dash line, I should make them different colors, having having this line get closer to this line is really good. Um as long as this line also goes up with it. I'm making any sense here at all, it's just gibberish. And and so, so right now, what we're, so we're trying to do is raise this line up so it just matches this better. Um, and it's tricky to do that because we don't know where this big line here is. We don't, we don't know where it is for each individual player. Um, the this line here, I should, I should color coded them. This line here makes is, is kind of static for all players, but the the main line that you're playing on, like for maybe a new player, is like really, really close to that on their first alt. But a super experienced player is more like this. And so there's it's the distance between these two lines. I got it. It's the distance between these two lines that's the problem that we have to account for. And we have to do better at allowing the people that are playing on this line here to bring that dotted line up to match it. Um, <laughs> I know it was a big mess. Uh, it wasn't very well thought out. I should have thought that out before drawing it all. But I hope I hope we, that kind of sheds light on what we're trying to do um, to, with it. And we do have some plans to accomplish that. Um, but it is not simply just um, open up everything right away. This is kind of the same thing as we were talking before. It's, it's not just um, allowing that corruption to be shared fully. <laughs>